Hello everybody. Hi Cherry. I'm kind of tired to be very honest. Let me make sure that this is properly set. Because it's a little bit too bright. There we go. Oh, come on. There we go. Um, can you hear me well? I hope everybody can hear me okay. Sorry, I just got... Yeah, uh, I apologize. I'm still a little bit tired. I did so much stuff yesterday and then uh, I always try to catch up with everything that's around the house. Hello, Francoise. So to start with, and as I said, I'm going to make this in the easiest way. Uh, possible because uh, this was specially designed so that people who have some hands issues or are not very advanced can still make something pretty and uh, the way that it's going to be arranged is going to be like this And we have it already. Uh, something that really can help you, hi Pamela, whenever you're uh, putting together your uh, necklace. Oh, just a second. Is something like this. And you can find them fairly cheap in your regular craft store. To be honest, I don't even think that I've added one in the influencer store but uh, as you can see you can um, already get your measurements here pretty much and you can figure out the distance that you want stuff to be at now when we are talking about making a necklace the way that I'm going to make it to show you uh, what you need to keep in mind is what the heck did I do here I forgot this and one here what happens if I am placing this on because the way that I'm going to do it I'm going to make a little hole here and I'm going to put one of those little eye screws and then attach them using a double coil jump ring but uh, what I want to to tell you and this is also for other types of um, cabochons this kind of thing you do not want to place it on a hi Donna <laughs> um, you do not want to place it on a chain or on a regular jewelry wire you want to place it more on a memory wire type of thing and that is because I uh, think about it uh, about gravity okay what will happen if you get all of these are going to be hanging by a little eye screw from here and I'll tell you exactly what will happen when you put it on your neck oh let me get this out of the way when you put it on your neck they are going to be kind of like this because they will want to obviously get all together going down and it will be all scrunched up in the middle so uh, 
unless you're using a memory wire type thing, you want to leave them quite at a quite larger distance so that when they start following the gravity but even so because you have the stuff here if you already made them with holes for a jewelry wire or something that is different but if you make them to hang go for memory wire type thing do not put them on jewelry wire unless you make a very tight strand of beads <coughs> excuse me and then you make some loops that get them in between the beads but the very tight strand of beads would hold a shape like this uh, the other thing that i wanted to tell you if you make them to be put on a, a jewelry wire or jewelry uh, beading wire beading you know the softer thing not the wire wire uh, and I've seen this many many times and most of the I mean I've seen it only in beginners and uh, people who did not uh, I'm sorry uh, people who did not do jewelry for a long time um whenever again whenever we are talking about putting these on a chain uh, or putting them on jewelry wire whenever you have things and i'm going to get only these for uh, explanation because it's much easier to see that way whenever you're doing cabochons and even on these if you're doing your um hole for putting in the the jewelry jewelry wire what happens when you if you make your hole straight like this right your necklace it's going to look like a bunch of sticks they are going to be like this if you're going for that specific look it's okay but if you're going for a nice simple tiered uh, necklace then you have to be very careful and i'm going to take this again to show you because if you want your let's assume that these are the biggest ones are longer and the, then you have sh smaller ones to do the tiered thing if we want them all to be going downwards then you have to do your holes at an angle the the one that would be in the middle obviously will have the hole like this but for the ones that go on the sides your hole will have to be at a little angle like this and uh, the higher you go towards the neck the sharper your angle if you want your cabochons to be nicely hanging down not to go stick like like this the stick like look is very nice for tribal and stuff like that but if you're trying to do which is not the case for this specific thing it's just a tip that i'm giving you if you want to do something more classy and more uh, you know classic not just classy because the tribal ones can be classy as well but if you want to go more classic then when your cabochons are you want your cabochons to hang down then you'll have to do your holes at an angle and the best thing i i wouldn't suggest actually using one of these but use the the template of a bib necklace because that one sits much more natural than this thing does this one is especially for beading simple beading so we are not going to do that on this one and i'm going to actually let me grab them so i can show them to you i 
and uh, yes these are added in the uh, uh, jewelry findings in my amazon influencer store you can get these that are very I, I just grabbed the black but you can get them in all kinds of colors including silver and gold hi ellen and they are very easy to thread through beads because the me and my hands they are practically screwed it's a screwed fastening and this can easily go through a larger hole bead and definitely can go through uh, an eye screw uh, pin and then all you'll have to do for them not to start sliding in and out you just put a little bit of uh, jewelry glue or loctite or whatever but i'm going to start first with doing the um, uh, holes and no this time i did not make a whole bunch ahead of time just because i want to show you how you're supposed to go about it i've always told you that whenever you do holes in polymer clay you need to start with the smallest do not go straight it doesn't matter which way you put the hole in it doesn't matter at all but you always uh, you never go directly with the hole uh, with a large uh, bit with a bit for a large hole because uh, your polymer clay may start breaking hi fran and uh, uh, all around the hole it's going to crack and it's not going to be a pretty sight but why i didn't do the holes uh, the reason is that i also wanted to show you how easy it is to work with this uh, specific uh, hand drill and i told you that i got this i discovered it on amazon somebody had told me about this uh, brand and it's only like i forgot it's 10 or 12 dollars so it's super cheap and it comes with two uh, sets of drill bits so your main thing would be to pretty much get the middle here and you go straight in the very middle of it It doesn't take long. Hi, Judy. By the way, um, if you watched my live yesterday from Lowe's, I went ahead and I added in the description the link to the tutorial I made two years ago on how to make uh, copper bales using the... Uh, those copper coils for the refrigerators and the pipe cutter because in that specific tutorial I show you how to use the pipe cutter I'm sorry I didn't uh, go for them yesterday but there was this guy <laughs> who noticed that I was taping and he was trying his hardest to get in front of me and in the field of vision of the phone and that's why i kept turning around so many times because i didn't want to <laughs> i almost went ahead to tell him hey dude you got your own phone do your own live okay what did i do here i did something wrong nothing it's okay so yeah you know a lot of times there are so many things that uh, especially for people who are of older generations 
what you have to think that when we started playing with clay and playing with beading and playing with that, uh, there was no internet or whatever internet there was, it was uh, definitely not what it is today. Uh, there weren't so many books. So most of the time, our only solutions were either to desperately find somebody who knew and start pestering them to show us this and that, or to just go through trial and error, you know? So, obviously, when you hear uh, an older crafter telling you, oh, don't do this, because in the words of Teresa Pandora Salgado, trust me, don't do that, because I did it, and it didn't work. <laughs> so, when we talk about stuff you shouldn't do, that most of the time means that at one point in time we did it. And we went like, nope, nope, that doesn't work. I know what I, I'm doing wrong here. I didn't uh, tighten my drill well enough. I know, and it's like, dude, what the heck? I'm talking about copper coils for fridges. You have no idea what I'm doing here. What's your problem I don't think he actually realized that I was on a live broadcast he probably thought that I was talking to somebody showing them something but uh, anyway that's why I didn't stay much longer in the area because I know how where how it looks like it's a different type of uh, display it's where there's stuff in uh, pouches, in bags of plastic, and they hang from hooks, not in uh, those little drawers. Okay, so I did all my stuff with a smaller drill bit. And I'm going to go for a larger one. This will be hmm? this should be good. When you're going um, through the clay you really need to go from size to size don't skip but when you're going like this it's okay but if i were go to go like this i would have gone with each size not skip here i skipped a little bit but yeah it was a uh, fun yesterday as my best friend works for um, a company that uh, practically emergency management because that's how we became friends we both worked for the Oklahoma State Emergency Management and we've been friends for gosh I don't know, like 13 years something like that and uh, right now she's working out of Austin Texas and she came home for a week of vacation so we've been doing and going around doing stuff so we went to Lowe's, we went to Aldi's, we went to Target we didn't manage to do normally before she left, before she started working out of town we used to go all the time to Goodwill and such but we didn't really have time yesterday but i'm glad i managed to get that uh, to find that marble because i knew they had brought it and i absolutely wanted one 
because my main thing is not about because remember that I do have a white um, tile white mat glass mat and of course, uh, somebody messaged me after that and asked me, well, you cannot use a shiny marble? Uh, yeah, of course, it's more desirable that you use a shiny marble. Only that my biggest issue, and this is why I've uh, gotten this black one, is with the glare. Because if you remember when I first started, I had that uh, white, and I still have it, the white... Uh, it's actually a white glass pastry board it's for working with fondant and stuff but that one had a lot of glare and everything that i tried after had a lot of glare and it's not at all good when all that glare from the lights uh, comes into the camera but uh, i'm not super happy on working on black because i think it doesn't really give you a nice mood and I've been looking for some uh, satiny, non-glare marble for whenever I'm doing stuff that doesn't involve measuring, you know, like canes stuff. And I'm really happy that I found one. So once I'm done with the stuff that I'm working on here, I'm going to start preparing uh, so I can switch in them in between now my next move is to bring the eye screw screw pins and check them <coughs> Okay, and these ones, uh, there's a lot of stuff that you can find, and I did uh, add quite a bit of them in the jewelry findings in the Amazon Influencer Store. Uh, you can find quite a bit of sets, like I got these uh, eye screw pins. Am I going the right way? No, I think I'm supposed to go like this. Um in a little round box that had six colors. No. Yeah, six colors, one, two, yeah, six colors. And you can find a lot of these, you know, like with lobster clasps, with the uh, uh, jump rings, with all kinds of stuff. So, let's check if it is the right size now. No, I need to go one size higher. And you can always kind of measure it against the pin. You put the pin over the... Oops. I'm trying to show <laughs> kind of the pin because uh, what you need to look is at the widest areas of the pin. You are not going to actually screw this in. You will still need to glue it. But you need uh, for that screw part of the pin to have enough room to move around in there so it wouldn't start uh, breaking your clay when you put it in uh, there are a few things to keep in mind whenever you're working with uh, polymer clay trying to imitate other materials uh, the main one is that even if it looks like metal wood leather etc it still is polymer clay hi chris hi laura so whenever you're talking about fastenings whenever you're talking about any kinds of findings any kinds of attachment any kinds of anything 
do not treat it like it is like if it were the original material you have to think that it is still polymer clay and being polymer clay it is plastic so if you would put a type of closure in let's say a type of screw in wood in a certain way and you can screw it in and you don't have to worry about it coming out uh, it's not the same thing with polymer clay with polymer clay because it's plastic because it's very sensitive to temperature changes because it's got all the physical proper and chemical properties of plastic whenever you put stuff like this in you'll have to glue it because can you initially just screw it in yeah and then whenever it's going to get warm or the thing is going to get warm against your skin going to slide right out so yeah one thing i should have done and i didn't was to varnish the backs and i did not but oh well, I can do it after I set them. Okay, I think I did all of them. I was talking and I lost count okay so now the next step is to prepare the glue and let me get this out of the way and bring the glue oops And I usually use Loctite and this is how I wrap it I know it's got some stuff to cover it but I never managed to put it right because my hands do whatever they want to not whatever I want them to So the thing with the Loctite with two, it's kind of like with the regular resin being an epoxy glue, you need to mix part one and part two. So yeah, it looks very messy, but you can keep the mess away. And usually it's the, I always press harder on one side than on the other. I don't know why I do that. Oh, come on. Especially because I fussed around with it when I couldn't see properly. So. I'm doing messes. Okay. I'm good now. I got to place some glue where I wasn't supposed to, but it's going to be fine. I need to change this cling wrap and clean that. You can clean it with alcohol. So see, I have two parts here and what I want, I want to mix them exactly like for an epoxy regular casting resin. And why I use this instead of the simple one? For several reasons. It seems to me that it's more durable. Uh, it starts hardening faster. And uh, it doesn't seem to harden because it's separated. If you don't close it properly, it's not going to go hard on you just because it didn't tighten the lid. Because it's separated in two. And as long as those two are not together, 
they are not go going to harden on you. You know how when you have stuff like super glue and you use it once, you put the cap back in and when you try to use it the second time, it's already rock solid. But, uh, and I think that actually that is the main reason why I use uh, the two parts one. Because with my, again, I'm talking about will be time me my hands, but with my hands, I can never be sure that I did close something properly. And I'm also an airhead most of the time, so. Okay, four, and five, nine, five. A few of these will end up on the carpet, so no worries. Four, six, eight, nine. I think that if I take out 11, should be good. All right. So, and the idea is that you need to and dip your screws a little bit, not a lot, just use a little, a little, little, little bit. And then you screw them in. See, it's not difficult at all. Uh, just be always be careful that and test. Make sure that you did the holes large enough because otherwise, you're going to have some issues trying to put that in. It's better that it's slightly, I mean, just perfect for the size, even if it just slides in at the end out, because the glue will take care of that. It's better to do that than to force it in. Don't get too much because if you get too much, it's going to make a goop. Okay, I am checking the chat, so if you say something, I can at this point, I see well enough, even with my reading glasses on, to see the chat as well. Okay, too much, too much. So, um, to answer a few more questions that I got in between yesterday and today, <laughs> um, One of them was, uh, so when are you doing the leather stuff, full leather, female leather? Very, very soon. So be prepared for it. Now, the second question was, you did the rose cane and you said you are going to do more rose canes. Are you going to? Yes, I will. And we are actually going to do several projects with flower canes and stuff. And by the way, I'll show you something. I did show it before because I did at least one tutorial on this. But uh, 
And I forgot to show them yesterday. You can get these at Lowe's. And yeah, I'm looking at a fairy house too, but I cannot say when. Uh, you can get these, ma make sure that they are the metal. They are around two bucks, under two bucks actually. And you can find them with various openings. And they are great to use. Um, you can either use them uh, with the clay a little bit thicker and then you can remove the baking blank and just put it just this. Uh, or you can make the polymer clay veneer a little bit thinner and then just place it over the metal and put it on the wall. And yes, you can find them just with the outlets, not just the... Um, light switch but yeah talking about fairy houses um yeah i want to make a few and i want to make actually uh, show you the basic three different types you can make uh the first one is the simple decoration that you put on a shelf or in a china cabinet and stuff uh, the second type is the one that you put at the base of a wall and usually you kind of fix it on the trim to say that, oh my god, yes, I have fairies in the house. And the third kind, uh, and that one especially, I wasn't able to do anything because right after we finished the storm season, we went into super hot season. Uh, are the ones that you actually put outside on trees. What kind? Hi, hi, Leah. Hi, Rosanna. What kind of nail glue are you talking about? Nail as in fingernail nails or as in nails nails? Because with the glues that you're using, you always have to be careful that they are not uh, harmful to the polymer clay. That is very, very interesting. Hi, Sonia. Very, very important to keep in mind. Oh, yay. I didn't drop any of these. I'm so cool. Now, one thing that you can do in between, and if you remember, I did, oh God, how many, because I'm actually getting ready to do the Kingman, Kingman turquoise, because one of the, I'm not going to say ahead, because you know who's listening, um, but I'm going to do a Kingman turquoise. I did six, seven, four turquoise, um tutorials hi janice uh and turquoise was used very commonly in uh, ancient egypt in jewelry and stuff the other thing that was used all the time was lapis and I remember i did a lapis uh, tutorial and uh, another thing that was used very commonly was uh, coral. And then another thing that was used very commonly was uh, onyx, obs obsidian, black onyx, pretty much. But the most and the most and the most common was the lapis. And uh, if you want, you can add uh, black beads that would match perfectly the, the theme. You can make a few beads of uh, four uh, lapis. Uh, I showed you how. Let me actually check, the, uh, search the tutorial. And why did I put these like this? Because they are supposed to be like this. I have no idea why I did this. They are supposed to be perpendicular. I was thinking it about another way of putting them on. Oops. 
but uh, the way that I personally would do it and I know that that's going to mean that we get into yet another Sunday uh, the way that I would personally do it and that's what I want to show you today how to do is to make some uh, tube beads of four lapis because imagine that when you put them on here you can you when you put them on this uh, um, type of wire uh, choker uh, you will have room in between yeah that should work good I would have to check with the fingernail glue it depends on it, it should work I would think because they the the fake fingernails are plastic so it should work without a problem I don't I don't really see any problem with it unless it's uh, UV because if it's UV you cannot have the light penetrate in here to cure it properly um, but what I was saying if you put them here even if you kind of glue them they're gonna still be too much empty space between them but if you make some uh, lapis tube beads then they would uh, go perfectly in between these and for the lapis tube beads I know that I showed it with Pardo and I always recommended Pardo because it's a little bit stiffer I would not recommend a, a soft clay I would recommend a clay that's a little bit stiffer because you want those um, little inclusions that are in there you don't want them to be smudgy and have in any way any kind of curved uh, shape you want them to be quite granular so because of that you really want a stiff clay and um, you kind of can use primo but i'd still really uh, suggest to do um, something like Fimo Professional or Pardo. Now I've shown you how to do the Pardo Lapis. So I think that I'm going to do really quick um, a Fimo Professional full Lapis and full Lapis Tube Beads and I'm going to post it sometime at the beginning of this coming week because it shouldn't take me more than I don't know maybe an hour to do such a tutorial and then we'll uh, I'll put it together in that tutorial so we don't extend over another uh, Sunday but uh, I was thinking of showing it to you today but unfortunately and I'm going to be very honest with you I am very tired I think that I've been uh, battling a fri fibro flare since about Friday and I don't know if it's fully instated usually for a couple days before a fibro flare I get uh, fatigue extreme fatigue so it might be that it's not fully here I do have some extra pain but oh well so um, I didn't show you a lot today but uh, I promise you I will make a short tutorial on doing the four lapis with female professional and how to do the tube beads and I'll just put together the um, the whole necklace using one of these and the tube beads and then we'll be done and then I'll be able to show you something different uh, next Sunday and once again I apologize if you are expecting more but as I said I didn't want to disappoint you of by not having a life so uh, thank you all for being here and I hope that you got some useful information because even if I didn't do much I talked a, a lot and um, look forward for the little tutorial on the full lapis with female professional and putting this together and I'll see you next Sunday doing something that hopefully will be able to finish in one session so I don't get extended again so uh, 
yeah thank you so much again and i will see you next sunday i'm going to lay down now <laughs> and thank you have a wonderful uh what's left of sunday <laughs>